Today we are back to the franchise that would probably make George A. Romero take a time machine and stop himself from making Night of the Living Dead. Oh yeah, it's Lust of the Dead 3 Electric Boogaloo. That's not the title. Now even though I am really thankful that my Lust of the Dead video kind of blew up recently, I wasn't really wanting to go back to the franchise. It's not a secret that I didn't really like it from the start. Even though I did enjoy a lot of aspects from the first one, I absolutely despised the second one. But to my surprise and probably to the surprise of you guys, I really enjoyed this one. And for that, I'm sorry Jesus. Side note, this video is gonna be heavily censored and you could have probably guessed that if you're familiar with this franchise but I do have a patreon and I'll post this video uncensored on there the prices are as low as three Canadian dollars which is like 50 American cents <laughs> Lust of the Dead 3 is once again really short in fact with the credits it's only 69 minutes long get it that's the funny sex number. And even with that short running time, they still had to pad this with a lot of stock footage from the two previous entries. I'm not kidding, the first 9 minute is just a recap. And I was kind of grateful for that cause no way was I watching the two first entries again. <laughs> Just to bring you guys up to speed on the amazing lore of Lust of the Dead, a virus infected men turning them into grapists, and they're called Toxic Men in this universe, and that virus has kind of taken over Japan, pretty much leaving a couple of otakus untouched by the virus. However, they're more incels than otaku, and they don't really like women, and they take this as their opportunity to seize power over the women, and to also, you know, grape them. After this chaotic apocalypse, a woman takes over the country as prime minister, and North Korea sees this as their opportunity to launch a nuclear strike on Japan, which they do. Somebody add a baby that controls the grape zombies, and then there was this girl who kind of became a pop idol for the otaku group. There's a married couple, the guy doesn't seem to be turned into a toxic man, so a bunch of doctors in this refugee camp of women want to study him. The main doctor, who I don't remember her name cause nobody ever says their name in these films which kind of will make the synopsis confusing, fell in love with the pop idol girl and promised her to uh, save her. And then there's a robot sent from the United States that we learn in this film is meant to kill the baby that is controlling the grape zombies. Now that you're all caught up, here's Lust of the Dead 3. Which starts really slow cause the first scene after the 9 minute recap is a love quarrel between some of the soldier girls and some of the refugee girls. The doctors are still studying our mutated zombie with the enormous penis. Man, sometimes I don't even believe the things that come out of my mouth. Imagine being the one who wrote this. By the way, I learned that these are kind of written by Uzi oh Gawada, my God. a legendary deviant behind the my Chan's Daily Life manga, and of course the uh, adult manga about Junko Furuta. Yep. He also has cameos in these, but I don't recognize him, because why should I? So yes, the doctors are putting pressures on the girl to get a sperm sample from her husband, however he's not really interested in having intercourse with her because get it, they're married. Married people don't have sex. <laughs> So the main doctor tells our married girl to get a condom and get the sample that way, which she does. But in between that, there is a schoolgirl that goes to see her husband, and she's a virgin. Necessary information, I guess? And she tries to seduce him, which works, but it also turns him into a toxic man. So the issue wasn't that, you know, he wasn't a toxic man, it was that he needed to be turned on, which he wasn't, because again... Married people don't have sex. <laughs> and of course the wife doesn't take that announcement very well and she doesn't believe that he's one of these ugly toxic men. In between that time we go back to our main scientist girl who hangs out with an otaku that was in the previous film I think. He's not really important. He dresses up as a woman because you know men are supposed to be all toxic so if he dresses up as a man he'll get killed by the girls at the refugee camp. But yeah what happened to him? 
follow me, it's kind of hard to, to, to understand. He got his wiener cut off, and then the bomb exploded. He was exploded into pieces, and for some reason, main scientist girl brought him back to life, but without genitals. Am I really saying these things? <laughs> So yeah, main scientist lady is listening on her CB radio, which was given to her by iPatch scientist, which is now in a building with the robot that's supposed to kill the kid. And we can also hear the otakus having a meeting about how they hate women and this is their time to take their revenge. But not before a J-pop performance from our j-pop idol that cuts herself that was in the second one and the first one I, 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 she's momoko the girl that this main scientist is supposed to protect look i know it's hard to follow <laughs> if you're having trouble just go watch my two other videos i was just as confused as you guys are because i haven't watched any of these in like two years maybe the nine minute recap was kind of necessary and yeah they're having a show and then they plan to attack the base but in between that the doctor with the eye patch learns about the robot girl's mission and he's not really happy about it so he does what you need to do to kill a cyborg throw water on her which brings down the building. How? The fuck if I know. <laughs> this of course launches the otakus to do their attack and they attack the base. And of course the military girls can't restrain them because they're running out of ammunition. It's the apocalypse after all. So we get the um, World War Z of grape zombieing. There's so much grape in this guys. It's honestly that scene is that sequence is fucking filthy. And our doctor that is working with the married man kind of sees the end and she's like, I love men, I want intercourse. So she throws in a condom on his wiener and she's like, this is how we protect ourselves from the toxic men. They just have to wear condom. And apparently she had been doing this with other test subjects, including Sabu, which we later learn wasn't interested in the women because he's gay, so he was just graping men. You're still following me, right? So yeah, she jumps on the married guy's wiener, and then we see that she's getting transformed. The condom did not do its job. Why is that? Well, the married woman, because she knew the doctor was doing naughty things with the test subjects, Put a hole in the condom. But now that her husband is finally able to get it up, she's excited and she jumps on him, sacrificing herself. What a gal. <laughs> then the talking grape zombie on the bed with the giant mutated wiener also has a weenie in his mouth, which we see in full detail and you know, it's all, it's all chaos. So there's people just having intercourse, there's grape zombies just having intercourse with everybody, killing them. It's pure chaos, pure debauchery, which is kind of an impressive thing that they got so many extras that were willing to, you know, act in this kind of scene and to take off their clothes for this super low budget, silly, straight to video, grape comedy, zombie film, I don't know how to describe these. <laughs> And in between that, our scientist lady has cloned the katana wielding lady from the first film. So she helps out with the military, but it's kind of for unnecessary reasons because everybody is just getting destroyed. Then we got a sequence that really made me laugh. The pop idol sings Ave Maria as we see just chaos ensuing. And I don't know why, but any time a movie uses Ave Maria for some dramatic scene, but the, the scene is this absurd, it always makes me chuckle. <laughs> and the ending of this film in Lust of the Dead fashion is a cliffhanger. The blonde robot lady comes out of the ashes like a phoenix rising and she attacks the otaku, I think, hideout and then credit sequence for like four minutes because they really wanted that 69 minute running time. The end.
So, what did I think of Lust of the Dead 3? Uh, these movies have no subtitles. <laughs> Why am I, like, saying it like there's gonna be another word after the 3? I'll be straight up. The beginning of this is awful. It's just recaps, flashback. There's so many flashbacks to the previous films. If th it didn't have that, the film would probably be under an hour long. But, man, when this gets chaotic, it's honestly super entertaining. This movie is just an example of pure crassness of cinema. Like, these films don't have anything to say. I mean, there's some political commentary, but how can you take it seriously? They're so over-the-top Japanese that you just can't, like, not laugh at some of these absurdist sequences. Of course, the CGI in this is plentiful and god-awful. When they're shooting at the zombies, there's so much, like, fake, like, CGI blood that doesn't really work with the scene. I mean, the physics just don't make sense. And, like, the gunshots are CGI, the green screens are terrible, they can't even properly green screen out, like, hair. But you're not here for production quality, you're here for pure trash, and that's what this film is. Just pure, offensive, bottom-of-the-barrel trash. And if that's what you're into, you might enjoy this one. Not saying you will, because I don't think I did, but I enjoyed it just as much as the first one. And yes, that means that eventually, I need to find them, I'll have to cover the 4th, 5th, and even there's like a side one, there's, there's like, there, there's a movie in this franchise that is an offshoot of this franchise, and I'm pretty sure there's even a 6th one now in the official series. When are these gonna end? People, who are you, <laughs> who's giving you guys money? <laughs> anyway. See you guys later.